Today's video is brought to you by Upstart.com. We could all use a little help financially. With Upstart, you can secure a personal loan to pay off your debt quick, easy, and all online. If you need to pay off credit cards, consolidate debts, or just need money for personal expenses, over a half a million people have turned to Upstart. Upstart evaluates more than just your credit score and finds the smartest rates with trusted partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can view rates up front on loans up to 50000 it's quick, and you can be approved in 24 hours, receiving your needed funds in as fast as one business day. Loan amounts are determined based on credit, income, and certain other criteria provided in your loan application. Be sure to use our link, upstart.com slash boardfilm. Find out how Upstart can help you by clicking the link in the description. You will have a shot. It appears at the heavyweight title. He is the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. When you would enter the ring, already popping sweat, black shoes, no socks, black trunks. Here at the Hilton Hotel, there is electricity in the crowd. I've got goosebumps on the line. The WBC heavyweight championship of the world. As soon as you step in the ring, the other guy across the ring, what were you thinking? I mean, because he was thinking, oh, that's my ass. Any question the champion or chief sucks it? All right, let's get it on. Come on. He absolutely destroyed it. He knocked him all over the ring. Pound for pound. Mike Tyson, the greatest fighter of our era. Don't forget. Tyson already on his stool. His time for perfect. This is round two. This. His legs may be shut the as Trevor Burbick falls back in the Mike is a boy prodigy. He's 20 years old. He is uh, quite an incredible force in the heavyweight division, but he's just a boy. It's all over. We've got a brand new heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. And a devastating second round knockout. Mike Tyson, age 20, became the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history. His managers, cornermen, and friends ran to congratulate him. Tyson kissed Jim Jacobs. 20 years old, after less than two rounds, you're the heavyweight champion of the world. The Pac-Man would contend for his first internationally recognized belt. At 33-0, he was an undefeated powerhouse. Most fans at the time felt Manny was being moved up too quickly. SWBC flyweight title on the line, the title of... Chuchai Shashiko, Manny Pacquiao. At this stage, a loss could have meant a return to poverty and obscurity. But when you fight for a cause greater than yourself, to break free from a ruthless cycle of poverty, how much you can take is not quantifiable. Down he goes where there was a cracking body shot in amongst the barrage of blows. Manny Pacquiao has come of age in Thailand. He is a world champion. At age 18, the Pac-Man was a world champion. Won the lineal championship of the world and then skipped up a couple weight classes. Shashakul, his reign is over. The Pac-Man's has just begun. Because in his early years, he was fighting to earn a living to improve the quality of life of his family. A new champion had risen. The biggest heavyweight fight in years was set. He said that he figured out something. Interestingly enough, after he got hit with that big blow in the 12th round of the first fight, and he got, got up at that point and, and, and took the attack to Wilder in that 12th round. It's time for the main With him saying that he's gonna knock him out in the second round, you know, it leads me to to suspect that he's got, for one, his nervous energy. He, you got to think, Deontay Wilder coming into that fight has flatlined every single opponent he's faced except for Tyson Fury. What a spectacular entry! 
entrance by the baddest man on the planet, Deontay Wilder, the heavyweight champion of the world. So he was probably thinking he, he could murk anybody. He mm -hmm. All he has to do is to touch him. Tyson Fury changed trainers. Leading up to this fight, now working with Javon Sugar Hill out of the Crunk Boxing Gym in Detroit. Clean at all times, protect yourself at all times. Tyson Fury predicted a knockout in the second. The pundits did exactly what you'd expect them to predict a Fury loss. In order for him to knock Wilder out, you gotta be willing to take it yourself. I don't know of anybody who's willing to take it from Wilder. I don't think Fury's that dumb. Oh! Big right hand! That snap back the head of Fury! Everything you told me three weeks ago, I'm coming in at 270. It's gonna be simple, balance, fundamentals, one, two. I'm gonna lean on him and take him out. He shifted his strategy, having seen a potential weakness in Wilder's defense during their first meeting. I don't know what you're talking about, knocking somebody in the second round. You ain't never knocked nobody in no second round. You got pillows for feet. He never believed that Tyson Fury was actually going to fight that way. He was going to jump on him. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Tyson said he was going to do that. I know, but... I like, told him the game plan. Right hand. Wilder got clipped. He parted ways with his longtime trainer and took to the famed Kronk Gym, where he trained to utilize every pound of his massive frame. And he is putting his body weight on Wilder. Wilder needs to stay away from the ropes. From this standpoint, blood streaming a little bit from the mouth of Wilder. Fury was going to dictate the action, an unfamiliar position for the Bronx Bomber, whose opponents typically danced away from his mighty power. may be off. Fury took every chance he got to lean on Wilder. Stop, stop, stop. Grabbing. Tiring. Yeah, the fact that he is putting his body on Deontay Wilder. Sapping his energy. Tying him up and battering his body. I believe he put that exercise on. He used every bit of it as well for that fight. Making the fight an ugly one. Fury was in complete control of the match. Down goes Wilder again for the second time in the fight. Wilder's legs were gone. Starting the sixth round, we'll see if the champion can reassert himself, but he still seems to be having issues with his balance. Fury pummeled Wilder. So you want to taste blood. You've said this before, and you've said it in the lead up here. not bother me. I'm going to take him, I'm going to cut him, and see how he, he feels like it. I'm going to see if he's going to get up off the floor. I don't think he's got the bottle, minerals, whatever you want to call it. And he's an on-top fighter. He's a bully fighter. And when a bully gets bullied, he falls every single time. Finally, after absorbing one devastating attack after another, Wilder's corner threw in the towel. Tyson Fury has become the new WBC heavyweight champion of the world!
the Gypsy King was back on top. He's a king who has fallen, rose again, never rose as high as he did tonight. Hail, hail the planet's baddest man. By the time the Liston weigh-in took place, it was in agreement with the boxing people that we should get serious. It's the morning of February 25th, the day of the big fight. Now we'll see the craziest weigh-in in all boxing history. We don't want to make Sonny mad. Sonny's bad enough when he's not mad. And I agreed to that all the way up, and then he hit the door. Clay said uh, anybody would have to be afraid of a crazy man. It was all part of young Clay's master plan. Clay was smart, and he was clever. And he had, he could get on the list and skin more so than anybody ever. I saw Sonny Liston a few days ago, Cash. Ain't he ugly? <laughs> he, he's too ugly to be the world's champ. Now, the world's champ should be pretty like me. Well, he told me to bet my life that you wouldn't go three rounds. Well, if you want to lose your money, then bet on Sonny. This had to be somebody who was whistling past the graveyard, somebody who had to be scared, who was trying to, you know, keep his courage up before he was destroyed. I felt that Sonny Liston was going in and squash this uh, boastful, braggardly kid like an ant. All set now. World heavyweight boxing title on the line. Just the anticipation of my father thinking that Ali was going to get killed literally by Sonny Liston because that is what people thought. The real drama around this fight was whether this hysterical man-child was going to lose his nerve, whether he was going to show up, and whether he was going to get killed. Barry Slippery. Greatest of all time, greatest athlete, ambassador, human being of all time. The challenger is jabbing all Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Look at the guy yawning. Tell us what you think at the end of one. You look at the videos, or there's documentaries, there's movies, and it's hard to sum him up because you could do documentaries on different parts of his life. Sonny Rabo! Sonny Rabo! Has him hurt! Sonny has a big mouth below his left eye. So I get him down, I get the sponge, and I pour the water into his eyes, trying to cleanse whatever's there. Before I did that, put my pinky in his eye, and I put it into my eye. He burned like hell. There was something caustic in both eyes. Joe Polino had used Monsell solution on that cut, and my kid, sweating profusely, went into both eyes. What the heck, let's face it, biggest fight of his life and he's blind, he can't see. Joe's eyes, his eyes are bothering him. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know exactly what happened. They're yelling from Cassius Clay's corner, something got in his right eye. Ali at 199 pounds was just not a, a full body heavyweight at that point. Well, Sonny Liston was probably 220. Oh, the ball! Cassius is a bit hurt. Sonny Liston put a horrible liquor on him in that round. The lesser guy would have folded, but then his eyes started clear. He started doing a number on Liston again. Sonny. Easy target. Cassius. Awkwardly fast. Good long left lead. In the sixth round, when Liston went back to his corner, Liston was a beaten man. What do you think is going on in Sonny's mind at this point? Well, I think that they feel now that, that Clay have all the confidence he needs and go on to beat the beat out of Sonny. Guys, it's Clay. He's got peripheral vision, sharp. He's looking over my shoulder. He's looking over my shoulder. <laughs> he got it up. We win. Sonny Liston! he became heavyweight champion of the world upsetting Sonny Liston the seven to one favorite electrified and there he was right in front of me and a whole bunch of other newspaper men pointing down to us like this I told you I told you I told you exactly what I was gonna do and no nobody even the big uh, sports writers they were they were in awe over what he had done so great, I don't have a mark on my face, yeah. and I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. Well, I'm hold the it. king of the world. Hold it, hold it, hold I'm it. I'm pretty. Hold it, you're not that pretty. I'm baby. a bad man. Wait, wait. I shook up the world. I shook up the world. 
In his first title fight, Foreman would be pitted against fan favorite Joe Frazier. Frazier had recently defeated Muhammad Ali and was viewed as the far superior boxer. Conventional wisdom heading into the Frazier fight was that George was a raw sort of rookie without the depth or the background to beat a great fighter like Joe Frazier. Scoring 34 knockouts. He's six feet four and has a reach of 78 and a half inches. George Foreman, the challenger. Because Joe Frazier had beaten Muhammad Ali and was undefeated, they didn't see how this young kid could win. He was undefeated and was coming off the Ali win, and he was a three and a half to one favorite. I must break you. Frazier, watch out! And then he's got these hands that are literally like canned like hands. Hands, yep. And he just. George was powerful. There's no doubt about that. I mean, he was out there to get me. His power seemed to be a weapon unlike any the sport had seen. Even the greatest of boxers could not stand up to him. It was absolutely devastating. No one could believe it. And from that point on, George was regarded as invincible. You got them death charges on me, man. I couldn't survive him. Foreman demolished the great Joe Frazier, knocking him down six times. You've been known as the hardest puncher ever. Frazier has never taken this kind of punishment. All I had was this one punch. And if I could hit you with you, I would hit you with it. I could take you out. If I miss you, you'd win on decision. <laughs> it's target practice for George Roman. And remember how he knocked Joe Frazier upside his head when Joe Frazier literally tried to run away from him? The winner is George Foreman! You're to be heavyweight champion of the world, as soon as it happens to you, it's like uh, John L. Sullivan uh, products. All the Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, Mohammed, it's like they all just pour right into you and you feel it. that moment, you feel I am the heavyweight champion of the world. Spence would get a shot at his first world title. Errol Spence going to England against a proven welterweight champion like Kell Brook. Paul, you, you know Kell Brook was one of the bigger, stronger welterweights and he's even had problems even staying at 147. Defending IBF welterweight. Champion of the world! It's the litmus test for Errol Spence Jr. The cool cat with the oozing confidence. So some really good punches landed already. From trying to drag Spence into a close, personal, hard fight. Showed a lot of toughness in that fight against Gilbert. Kell Brook was undefeated as a welterweight. That was a genuine challenge. Kell Brook is an excellent fighter. Right hand for Brook. Looking strong here. Brook really dominating for me in that round, looking really well. I think it's very close. Spence showed in that fight was that he is something special because the first six rounds of that fight were very even. Oh, good Spence shot for Errol Spence Jr. there. Much to the dismay of English fans, Spence put Brooke down and captured his first world title. Yeah, he's hurt, that eye's playing the trouble. The eye, I think he's going to send it out. It is all over, and Errol Spence Jr. from the Lone Star State is a new star of world boxing. Congratulations. It, it right to a guy who might have been the best welterweight in the world and really cementing himself as a welterweight champion. Some love you, some hate you. 
but I love myself. Mayweather's insane competitiveness and drive for an eternal legacy has blossomed into a relentless style of 24-hour-a-day on-call training. And here's another thing that Floyd has going for him. Conditioning. Un unfathomable. He's always in tremendous shape. Always. Just always in shape. Hard work. Dedication. Hard work. Most athletes adhere to strict workout schedules. Floyd, however, is not most athletes. He works out up to four times a day at unpredictable hours. Mayweather believes he gains a competitive and psychological edge by training while his opponents are sleeping. He now faced Hernandez in the first title fight of his career. Hernandez was the super featherweight champion in 1998. He gets in the ring with Gennaro Hernandez, who is a very good fighter, and uh, completely dominant. I want a good, clean fight. Right, touch gloves, let's go to Floyd Mayweather is seen by many as the most brilliant defender in the sport. Oh, what a vicious uppercut by Floyd Mayweather. It takes years to get a fighter to do the things that he's doing. Is that the end of the game? My brother's up in my church. Your brother says, fight Rudy over. Hernandez fight stops over. the fight. He is now the undefeated WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather, tears of joy. At the age of 21, Mayweather was a world champion. Okay, your opinion. You're going like you're this, this, this nice guy. You're a scum. Well, who are the bad boys? Cool and calculating by nature, Joshua was emotional for this one. It was a domestic showdown for the British title, a fight that had to happen. To add the vacant British title now. For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Let's get ready to rumble. This one has had a real bad edge about it. A lot of trash talking, a lot of nastiness. White trying to go Joshua. Joshua not taking the bait. Now it becomes very real indeed. And an awful lot on the line, personally, for these two, as White says he wants to expose Joshua as a fake. Big swing and a miss from White. It seems he's got clear some of the cobwebs. Oh, man. Well, that was Joshua. Hey, After the bell ending a lively first round, the fighters kept punching, creating instant chaos. Oh, completely. Now, what's happening here? Everybody's in the ring. Boy, that escalated quickly. Howard Foster doing absolutely the right thing here and just taking the sting out of it, calming everybody, calming the two boxers down. And this crowd is getting super heated as well. Is this the breakthrough? White looking to hold on. He will be knocked out clean and they stay down and they've been knocked out clean. Nobody, you do, you, you get on the ropes, you throw some little punches, the referee jumps in and stop it. When I hit people, they go down. Who have you knocked out clean and they stay down and they've been knocked out clean? Nobody, you do. Let's start first of all, something that was mentioned at the press conference, your father is your trainer. Bringing him along as a fighter, instead of leaning only on his son's strengths.
Inouye hails from humble beginnings, training in his tiny home, and utilizing makeshift equipment. His father standing by his son every leg of the journey. His skills were honed the traditional way, with emphasis on fundamentals and footwork. Talk about the monsters from Japan. You've had, what, Giant Robot, Godzilla, and now Loch Ness and New Wave. With Western boxers, it's become common for top guys to wait 20 or 30 fights before they contend for a title. Japanese boxers are expected to contend for a title in their first 10 pro fights. In his sixth fight, he took a shot at the WBC light flyweight world title. It's balance and timing. He seems always to be in the right position on his feet, and he throws when he wants to. Just when you think you've got your timing down against him, it will open up with something different. Precision, power, speed, everything. Every punch that he throws has so much power in it and so much spike. He is a dangerous fighter. It may go four, five, six rounds, but as soon as he lands clean on him. He possessed X-Men like power and speed. In just his 36th round of professional boxing, Inoue had captured a world title. The quickest a Japanese fighter has ever done it. Alan Minter became one of only a handful of British fighters to actually gain a world championship in the United States with his victory over Vito Antuofermo in March 1980. This time against newly minted champion Alan Minter in Wembley Arena. Hagler came to London for the fight that cost Minter the title and British boxing its good name. And Alan Minter didn't particularly help the case. He gave an interview to, to Des Lynham for Sports Night where he said, uh, he said, I'll never lose my title to a black man. Minter was the heavy crowd favorite as the Brits showered their champion with cheers. As you look at the crowd, which has just sung God Save the Queen, it is always a moving scene. I must say... Round one. Out is underway. Round one. This British crowd raw with every exchange, particularly if one exchange favors me. The marvelous one beat Minter senseless for three rounds. Blood pouring out of Minter's nose now, pouring out. And he and he butchered Minter. Blood just before. Again, the right lane. That's the second. Throwing beer cans. One's landed on me, and this is. Is what he used to fuel him through the next 12 defenses that he had. A few days after Michael Mora beat Evander Holyfield, I got a call from George. And I said, George, you can't kid me. You want to fight Michael Moore. And he said more than anything else in the world. When Michael Moore defeated Holyfield to become the new champion, George Foreman, at age 45, would get one final shot. I knew what Teddy told me, like, this is a, he's a big con. And I just look at him like, go get me a sandwich and sit down. Man, you're so fake. Featuring the clown king of the sport, the larger-than-life George Foreman. Well, there are a lot of skeptics out there who think that George now is more King Con than King Con. But George hasn't earned this a championship shot as a fighter. He hasn't fought in a year and a half, and on that inauspicious occasion, he lost to Tommy Morrison. Uh, with, uh, with the fighter that he's fighting, he's going to have to punch and punch and try to club him and just keep beating him, but I don't think that's going to happen. So you see no chance that George can win the fight? Very little. Very little. Foreman looked to become the oldest heavyweight champion in boxing history, but despite the optimism of the crowd, 
few gave Foreman more than a puncher's chance. Middle-aged men don't knock out 25-year-old heavyweight champions. He would be the oldest to win the heavyweight title by a huge margin over Walker, who was 37, when he beat Ezra Charles. I always thought if the George Foreman from the Rumble in the Jungle had the brain of the George Foreman who fought Michael Moore, yes, that's the greatest only... fighter ever. Uh... Let's get ready to rumble! I'm the boss man in here. Take your hands to lunch. George, how are you going to find him? You haven't fought in a long time. He moves in there. He goes at a different angle. He's a southpaw. He, you know, he wouldn't stand still for Holyfield. Why would he stand still for you? And George said, you watch. Somewhere late in the fight, he's going to come stand in front. And in the press, the feeling was that Mike would be too sharp, too fast, too young. And Big George, too slow and too big and too old. This colossus of heavyweight boxing. A man with a foot in several decades. If people over the last two or three months think this fight shouldn't take place, think that George has proven himself in danger of real and serious injury. The shadow of Ali loomed large over the career and legacy of Foreman. The vibrations are against him, the plan is against him, but already he lost right. the first five rounds. Michael Moore will go back to Teddy Atlas. Big George will lumber back slightly slower. The hardest part of the fight is over. Now you know it's not make believe anymore. Teddy it's Atlas telling him our spawn partners were better. The hardest part of the fight is over. You know what he's made of. Our sparring partners were better. We're round eight. Foreman's trailing. Losing. But not out of the fight. Get all you got, George. That's a fantastic short left cross from Moore. A young footed and sent Foreman stumbling. George Foreman had never openly sought specific redemption for his demise against Ali and Zaire. But it's revealing that he chose to wear the same trunks on this night that he had worn in the jungle 20 years before. George Foreman in the shorts he wore that night in Zaire to rumble in the jungle when he lost his world heavyweight title. I told you! I told you! I'm the champion of the world! But he always saw the ghost of Muhammad Ali. and Everybody has felt all along that you're always chasing the ghost of Ali. Does this make you catch that ghost? You know how Ben in the ring with me. That's it! It's a short right hand! There is no way he's gonna knock from that! It happened! It happened! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Chasing the ghost of Ali. Does this make you catch that ghost. Yeah, I've exercised the ghost once and forever. Twenty years after being beaten by Ali, Big George Foreman recaptured the heavyweight championship, the oldest champion in the history of boxing. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody. Make it sound.